Um, so, uh, first of all, you know, before before you uh, clock my time, um, this is this is a debate between uh, uh, me and uh, Ahmad. So, uh, audience, uh, we are not going to take uh, any hand raise right now. Uh, we are just strictly going to have a dis uh, have a debate, a twenty minute twenty minute round, and then we will have a rebuttal and so on and so forth, right? So uh, after that, if there are any questions, then you know audience can come in, sticking on to this particular topic. Okay, uh, what are, can I can I go ahead and start? Yeah, you can start your presentation. Okay, uh, greetings to you in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, today, uh, you know, we're going we're going to have a a debate on the treatment of women in Islam as well as in Christianity. Um, and my dear brother Ahmad is here, who is representing the Islamic side. And uh, he actually asked for a couple of series of debates. And yeah, uh, we're going to have a couple of uh, more debates. Uh, previously, we had a debate on the idol worship in Islam and Christianity. And you can see that debate being uploaded in my channel. And you can see my channel in my, uh, my profile. It's in the same name, Nazarene Scholar. So you can see that debate also uploaded. And this particular debate will also be uploaded there. Um, coming to uh, my topic, uh, what is the status of women in Islam? We know that Islam gives a clear instruction on how women should be, how women should be uh, conducting themselves and how they should be wearing their hijab. So I want to touch the part of hijab. Um, in Surah 33 verse 59, Allah gives a clear instructions that, O Prophet, tell the wives and the daughters and the believing women that they should cast their outer garments over their persons that is the most convenient that they should be known as such and not molested. So Allah is saying that if you don't want your women to be molested, then let your women put their hijab in front of them. Why is it that Allah is asking this? Because uh, before this particular ayah, Hijab was not a mandatory thing in Islam. Hijab was not something that uh, the Muslim women used to wear. Hijab is something that has been imposed upon the Muslim women by a person called Umar. Now, Umar is the guy who wanted that this particular cloth, you know, uh, covering the entire face and uh, your entire um, everything, every body part, and just making your eyes visible. That that particular cloth has been has been actually suggested by Umar. And I will give you the background of this. There is a you know, if you if you go ahead and uh, read one of the hadith, uh, which is Sahih al-Bukhari 6240, which clearly states that uh, it says like this, narrated Aisha that the prophet, uh, uh, the wife of the prophet, that Umar bin al-Khattab used to say to Allah's apostle, let your wives be veiled. So it is Umar who used to tell Muhammad that ask your wives to be veiled, but he did not do so. It was not Allah, but it was Umar who used to ask Muhammad to tell his wives to wail themselves. But the wives of the Prophet used to go out to answer the call of the nature at the night only at Al-Manasi. Once Sauda, the daughter of Zam, went out and she was a tall woman, Umar bin Al-Khattab saw her while he was in the gathering and said, I have recognized you, O Sauda. He, Umar, said so as he was anxious, so some divine order regarding the wail, the wailing of the woman. Uh, so Allah revealed the verses of the wailing of the woman. Now, this is, this is why I usually say that the hijab is not a, a, something that is a modest dress. A hijab is otherwise called as poop cloth or a Latin cloth because this, this verse was revealed by Allah so that the women could wear this cloth and go to toilet. Nowadays, this, this cloth has been upholded by the, by the Muslim women not knowing the history of hijab. The history of hijab is very clear. So again, this, this is uh, not something which is uplifting women. I'll give you multiple, um, uh, multiple references if you want, but this is how it is. 
So hijab is one thing which is oppressing. Going to the next one is Allah does not comp uh, does not understand women equal to men. You can see that in multiple verses. Say, for instance, Surah 4, verse 11, where it says, "Instruct you, instruct you concerning your children for the male what is equal to the share of two females." So Allah is saying that whatever a male will get. The women will get like two women equal to one male. That is how the share of the women goes in Islam. Allah, why are you doing this? Is there a reason particularly why you are doing this? Now, if you want to know further why Allah is doing this, you have to go and dig a little deeper and you can see this presentation if possible. We will be uploading that into the channel as well. The whole presentation is presented there. Why is Allah, do, why is Allah comparing two women equal to one man there is a reason behind it because allah thinks or muhammad thinks that women are brainless or they have half brain um, there is another hadith where uh, muhammad the prophet of islam he is comparing women to dogs and donkeys sunan ibn majah 951 in sunan ibn majah 951 it was narrated from abdullah bin mugaffal that the prophet said the prayer is severed by a woman a dog and a donkey so you can see that even an islamic prayer will be cancelled if a woman walk in front of a man who is giving prayer now Allah, why are you doing this? Are you deaf? You cannot hear when a woman walks in front of a man who is praying to you. See how degrading it is that Allah is comparing women to dog and donkey. Because if a dog or a donkey walk in front of a, a praying man, a Muslim man, then the prayer gets annulled or gets cancelled. I will give the reference again. Sunan Ibn Wajah 951. It is a Sahih Hadith. Now, I will give you one more reference. This is Aisha, the mother of the prophet, mother of the believers herself is saying in Sahih al-Bukhari 514. Sahih al-Bukhari 514, Aisha is saying, narrated Aisha, the things which annul a prayer were mentioned before me. And those were a dog, a donkey and a woman. I said, you have compared us women to donkey and dogs. See how Muhammad is comparing Muslim women to dogs and donkeys. Is it not degrading? Now, this is why I say that Muslim women should not accept Islam. Any honorable Muslim woman will never accept Islam. And she should leave Islam right now, right at this particular instance. Now, I will go to another uh, point which I have in my presentation, which is that it is not just that Muhammad is comparing uh, Muslim women to dogs and donkeys, but like I stated my previous point in Quran chapter 4 verse 11, that Allah is comparing women to uh, women as half-brained, Muhammad is also doing the same thing. In Sahih al-Bukhari 2658, it is said that narrated Abu Sayyid al-Qudri, the Prophet said, isn't the witness of a woman equal to half of that of a man? So that means that if a woman, uh, if there is an uh, incident that happened, an accident that happened in front of, of, of an individual, if a man see that particular instance, then he can testify in that court. If one woman see that incident, then she cannot be a valid testimony at the court unless there is another woman that is standing beside her and both of them go and testify. So this is what this particular hadith is saying. The Prophet said, isn't the, woman, isn't the witness of a woman equal to half of that of a man? The woman said, yes. He said, this is because of the deficiency of woman's mind. So there is a deficiency in woman's mind because of which their testimony cannot be taken. The same thing, if you want to know in detail, it is also there in my presentation. And you can see that in, in the channel, which is in the Battle of the Beast channel, it will be hosted in Battle of the Beast channel. Um, the another reference that I'm going to give is Sahih al-Bukhari 304, where again Muhammad is saying that isn't the witness of a woman equal to half of a, of a man and that majority of the women are in hellfire. 
Muhammad is talking to a woman and he is saying that um, that uh, majority of the dwellers of hellfire were you women. They asked, why is it so? O oh, Allah's apostle, he replied, you curse frequently and are ungrateful to your husbands. I have not seen anyone more deficient in intellig intelligence and religion than you. A cautious, sensible man could be led astray by some of you. The woman asked, O oh Allah's Apostle, what is the deficiency in our intelligence and religion? He said, is not the evidence of two women equal to the witness of one man? They replied in affirmative. He said, this is the deficiency in her intelligence. Isn't, the tr isn't it true that a woman can neither pray nor fast during her menses? So Muhammad is saying that isn't it true that you cannot pray even your menses? Allah. My question to Allah is, Allah, isn't you the one who created women and gave them menses? If you gave them menses, then why are you holding them accountable for not being able to pray? In Christian, in Judeo-Christian worldview, you do not have any such restriction women you do not have to wait so that your periods would be over and then you can come and pray no you can come to the uh, to the grace you can come to jesus at any point of time and pray but when you are are in an islamic faith you cannot pray while you are in menses this is because allah does not have brain he does not know that if he is saying that he is the one who created you, then he should be the one who is responsible for this. But Allah does not know. Again, this is another reference that I have given in Sahih al-Bukhari 304. Now let's go ahead and see what further in Islam is, is, is a beautiful thing in, in Islam. In Islam, it's not just about, you know, that women are half brain and that women cannot pray because they have menses or it's not just because, you know, a prayer gets annulled if a woman or a dog or a donkey, as stated by Muhammad, you know, when a prayer gets annulled, it's not just that. It's not just limited to a woman being degraded in such fashion but also that a Muslim man has all the right to beat a woman. Now you would be shocked to think that, yeah, what? A Muslim man can beat a woman? Yes, you can beat a woman. Now I, I challenge you Muslims, can you show me one single verse from the Bible where a husband can beat his wife? Not even a single verse you can show where Bible gives the right to beat his uh, beat a, a, a wife. Instead, when Paul is writing his letter, he is saying that husbands love your wife as yourself. That love your your wives as your own body, and nobody hurts his body. So you take care of your wives, and that and that wives are supposed to love love their husbands. So that is the status that a a, a Judeo Christian worldview is giving. But on the contrary, you can see that Muslims are allowed to beat their wives. Now, my dear brother Ahmad, I'm not saying that you would beat your wife, you know, uh, she, since she is a, a Christian lady, but your, your faith gives you authority to beat your wife. Now, where does it say that? Surah 4, verse 34. Men are protectors and maintainers of the woman because Allah has made one of them excel over the other. Again, see how Allah is comparing? Now, going ahead, and because they spend out of their position, thus righteous women are obedient and guard the right of the women, of the men in their actions under Allah's protection. As for the women of whom you fear rebellion, admonish them, remain apart from them in beds, and beat them. See, that word is said as, وَإِذْرُبُهُنَّ Wa means and finally strike them. You can go and check in corpus.quran.com. You can see wa means strike them. Now Muslims bring up this takia and say, oh, it is actually, you know, a small tap. Or it is like, you know, from the back of a toothbrush, you just try, you just, you know, small, small no, no. Don't be a fool. It is not a small, you know, tap on their back. It's not. It is actually beating them. 
how do we know that because there are multiple instances where you can see that muhammad's sahabis used to beat their wives and muhammad himself gave permission to beat their wives now muhammad is saying this in sahih al bukhari volume 7 uh, book number 62 hadith number 132 it says like this narrated abdullah bin sam the, uh, the prophet said none of you should flog his wife as he flog a slave and then have sexual intercourse with her in the last part of the day there is another portion where muhammad is saying that none of you should ask his uh, ask a man why he is beating his wife sunan abu dawood book number 11 hadith number 2141 it says like this iyas bin abdullah bin abu daba reported that the messenger of allah saying do not beat allah's handmaiden but umar came to the messenger of allah and said women have become emboldened towards their husbands he the prophet gave them permission to beat them so Muhammad gave permission to beat their wives. Then many women came around the family of Messenger of Allah complaining against their husbands. Now, so the ladies, they came complaining that our, our, you know, our husbands are beating us. What, so what did this, this, uh, this devout, this, this, you know, great messenger is saying? As a reply, you should read it. It says like this, so the messenger of Allah said, many women have gone around Muhammad's family complaining against their husbands. They are not the best among you. So Muhammad is giving them the, the right to beat. And if the women are coming to complain to Muhammad, he is saying that you are not the best among the women. Don't come around my family and complain about these, these things. I'm not going to address it because Allah has given this particular verse to beat. So it is not a small tap. It is a proper beating. And you can see that in my presentation also that I have presented all of the evidences from the Sahih Hadith one after one after another. Now you can go ahead and see that it is not just, okay, another thing is, did Muhammad ever beat his wife? Because many a times we Muslims would come up and say, oh, you know, Allah has actually given us this verse and Sahabis had beaten their, their wives, but our prophet, the devout one, he has never beaten his wife. No, no, no. Muhammad has beaten his wife wife and you can see that in hadith 2127 where it is giving very clear evidence that muhammad hit aisha in her chest and aisha is saying that it it hurts me aisha is saying that it hurts me i'll just go further and uh, you know the uh, the last part of my my presentation i'll just conclude it is not just waiting it is not just uh, getting over with you know women getting beaten up but it is also that the muslim women they have to breastfeed adult men so that they have to admit adult women uh, adult men into their house now where does it say that in sunan ibn majah 1944 it says like this you just have two and a half yes Yes, I know. Um, so uh, in Sunan Ibn Majah 1944, it says that it was narrated that Aisha said the verses of stoning and breastfeeding and adult men were revealed and the paper was with me under my pillow. When the messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death and a tamed sheep came in and ate it. A tamed sheep ate the Quran of Allah. Where is the verse, my dear Muslim brothers? Where is the verse that is being eaten by this tamed sheep? And you can see that the instructions of, of uh, Muslim women to breastfeed an adult man is also mentioned in Sahih Muslim 1453a. And it is also there in my presentation. To conclude, I just want to say that any sane and honest woman who have some self-respect will never go into islam and she would leave islam now our dear muslim brothers they would they would uh, raise up arguments against the christian faith by saying oh jesus called a canaanite woman as a a dog you have to understand that it is not an insult at back then when Jesus is addressing that particular instance where this Canaanite woman is asking for a miracle to be performed by Jesus. And Jesus is addressing that particular uh, situation. 
because Jesus is saying that my time has not yet arrived that I should go and work among the Gentiles so he's saying that what what uh, what is to be given to the children is not not to be given to the little puppies it's not an insult when you translate it into english you would think of it as an insult there are many different passages that usually muslims bring up against the christian faith and i'm going to address that in my rebuttal round but what i want to say is that muslim women islam is a shame and you need to leave islam right now right at this moment if you have read islam and if you have understood islam from its context from the scriptures so i want to conclude by this that muslims please leave islam thank you okay thank you that was the timing was perfect okay now it's time for brother ahmed to bring okay. up okay Okay, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. First, I say uh, in the name of God, the most, the, the most merciful and the most uh, gracious, the sustainer of this universe. Uh, thank you for Brother Nazreen. Um, uh, Brother Nazreen raised the, the topic that he said the, the hijab uh, in the Quran is talking about the hijab. And uh, he come with the surah of um, uh, Ahzab 59. Uh, is this is the uh, a commandment for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said to prophet Muhammad say to your wives and the wives of the believers to cover their head with the hijab just to cover their head he doesn't say anything else and in this verse there is a freedom if they want to put it they can put it if they want if they don't want to put the hijab it is up to them, okay? And you need Allah Jalla Bihim na zalika adna and la yarufna. So that is is the best. So if you look at the verse, it tells you why they put that one, uh, that why they put the hijab because it's better for them not to be known and not to be harmful with the other uh, strangers. That's the meaning of this uh, verse. My brother also uh, bring the verse that it says uh, Allah is not uh, justice. He says that uh, the man has to take uh, double of the woman. It's Surah An Nisa, chapter 11, uh, verse 11. Sorry, chapter, uh, Surah An Nisa, verse 11. Uh, that's okay. I know that this is most of the Christian. They come with this one. Having said that in this verse, because in Islam, a man he is the one that who responsible of the woman, so that he can uh, provide her with the food with everything right so in the miras if you know my brother nazareth you know arabic miras if the father died and then there is the wealth they're going to divide it between men and women or between the children a boy and a girl they give a, a, a boy like a, more than the more than the women more than, more than the girl this is where because the man is the one that who go to get married the man is the one that who want to uh, pay for the woman for her jewelry for everything this is where Allah make that one equal because in this different in Christianity in Islam a man is the one that who is going to be responsible for the house for everything right this is the meaning of this verse my brother and I hope you're gonna read this one carefully first we before we agree that there is no chance I'm gonna go for the hadith because hadith need me to uh, bring it to go look at it and say we agreed before in the Quran and the Bible so brother raised a topic uh, well, the point, sorry, about the a woman is the is the half of the men in in term of witnesses. That's right. Uh, I told you this hadith. Hadith. A woman normally is different than the men in physiology. We're talking here treatment of the women and Islam in term of muamalat, muamalat, the treatment, not is physiologically or physically. Physically, man different. Uh, physiologically. A woman has got breast, woman get pregnant, woman has got the blood uh, circulation. So man hasn't got this one. So this is the difference. So in this one here, women, two women equal to the one, one man so that the other can remind the other one if they, if they forget the witnesses. This is the meaning of this hadith. And uh, he also said uh, the woman, uh, she cannot uh, fasting, she cannot praying uh, during the the blood cir circulation that's right because during the blood circulation she cannot uh, she cannot uh, performing ramadan uh, so and then she cannot uh, go to pray 
uh, in the masjid until she finished uh, blood and then she cannot read, read even the Quran. She cannot touch the Quran uh, differently. And I'm coming to that point. Similarly, in the in the Bible is even worse that one. Okay. And I hope all the, our uh, Christian uh, girls, they're going to listen to this one and then later on they're going to um, um, leave uh, the, the Christianity also. Okay. So he says the uh, prophet also uh, making the woman looks like a, a, a himar uh, uh, during the prayer. This hadith he mentioned to me before. I re I researched the hadith, the meaning of the hadith, because while you are praying in Islam, if the dog coming in front of you, you gonna you gonna distract you. If the do if the donkey came in front of you, you are gonna distract you because you you gonna scare from the dog. You are gonna destroy your your prayer. If the woman came in front of you, you're going to think about the woman, think about, oh, how beautiful is, beautiful is she, and this one is going to dis, dis, uh, distract you from your prayer. That's the meaning of this hadith. But it doesn't mean that's the inclusion. There is something being added. When he said that, the, oh, prophet, are you comparing us with a donkey? That's wrong. That's being added. That's wrong. This is why we call the hadith is sahih. Some people, they added it and twist it, and then they put it there for us. Anyway, I respond to your point in hadith. That's not our point. Now let's go to uh, the, the point that I'm going to raise. First of all, I'm going to read from uh, Zachariah chapter 5, uh, verse uh, 5 to 8. In here, in the Bible, it's saying that the woman is an evil. The woman is the shaitan. And then he saw that woman, she is an evil. If you want, go and read that verse. It is there in the Bible for you. You have to read. Fatarahaha Ardan. Even he dropped the woman on the floor and he put the heavy weapon in her mouth. That's not the treatment in Islam. Don't talk about the hitting a woman in Islam, my friend. This is bad. Okay? This woman is being dropped down on the floor and the heavy the heavy gun is being put in her mouth. This is Zechariah 5, uh, 5 to 8. Now, let's go to the other one. It's a genocide. Chapter 3, uh, verse 16. Write that down, my friend, and then you can read it in your own time, or the people who are watching us or who listen to us, they can check that verse also outside. The man is dominant to the woman. Look this one. وَقَالَ لِلْمَرْأَةَ تَكْثِرِينَ أَكْثَرَ أَتْعَابَ حُبْلِكَ تَكْثِرِينَ أَكْثَرَ أَتْعَابَ حُبْلِكَ So when she get pregnant, Allah said that, uh, your Lord, not Allah, the, Allah, your God, you, you're talking about, you're going to make her to feel painful. Tell it to, to be painful during the birth. Okay? The Rajul, he will be dominant on you. This is not Islam saying that the man is going to be dominant into the woman. It's not saying that. I've got too many verses. If you go to, um, uh, to Surah Al Isra, he said, Allah said, do not worship anyone except him, and you be very kind to your parents. And also Allah said, Al Muslimina wal Muslimat wal Mu'minina wal Mu'minat wal Hafizat wal Sabirina, Kulluhum Zalika, Lohum Ajran wa Makhiratun Azima. Both of them, all of them, those who believe in. This is Surah An Nisa also, chapter uh, Nisa 124. Okay, whoever make the good things, men or a female, who are women, and he is a believer, those who are gonna go enter to the al jannah, and these people they are not gonna uh, reduce every anything from their deeds as long as they believe men, women, female, or uh, uh, male. These both of them they're gonna go to the there is a lot of uh, verses I can quote it out uh, for you. Okay, now I'm going to go to the quarantine, the first Corinthians, chapter 11.3, right? This is saying, The man will be the head, because it says here, كل رجل هو لكن أريد أن تعلمون أن رأس كل رجل هو المسيح. The head of every man is the Jesus or the Messiah. The Messiah in English, Masih means Messiah. And the head of the woman is the man. Okay? That's, that's, um, that's the verse in First Corinthians 11.3. Uh, uh, that one. How come a man is going to be on the head of the woman? That's injustice, my friend. 
Now I'm gonna go back also to quarantine eleven six to eight. That's um al in al mara la tugati rasa fal yuqas sharha. You talking about hijab? Hijab in Islam, Allah said, tell them if they want to cover their head. This is the first quarantine chapter eleven verse twelve. Uh, verse eleven, sorry, verse eleven. <laughs> Look at this one. The woman amma rasa al mara fu huwa rajul. Um, no, sorry, this where is it? First uh, Corinthians chapter eleven six to seven. If the woman cannot uh, cover her hair, in kana kabihan lil mara an tuqati aw tuhlak fal tuqati. So the woman who doesn't cover her hair, her hair should be shaved off. Look at that. All the sisters in Christianity, if you do not cover your hair, your Bible said your hair should be shaved off. Can you believe that? Is that the uplifting the woman? No way, my brother. This is decreasing the woman. Okay? This is the comparison here. The second verse, number seven, it says, the man cannot cover his head. Why? Because it is in the picture of God. Because it's being created as the picture of God. Then the woman is the, is the thing that the man can be enjoyable with. <laughs> this is not justice, my friend. Uh, let's go to this one. Uh, first quarantine also. Uh, what was it? This one here it says also the woman, first quarantine, chapter 11, 7 to 8, it, it also continue. And then there is a lot of things here. It says the, the woman is being created for the man, and the man is not being created for the woman. For that, the woman uh, should, uh, the man should be uh, the king or sultan for the woman and on the top of her head. Go and read that chapter as well if you want to. I need to move on to uh, where the where the woman when she has got the uh, blood cir circulation, really lefticus chapter fifteen. If you go from one to twenty seven, I'm not going to read that. This is long. This is says basically I'm going to give you the general idea of this one, right? Right, leftical uh, lefticus. Chapter 15, 127, uh, 1 to 27, and then you can go until up to 31. It says the woman, if she get the uh, blood uh, circulation, she cannot touch anything. Whatever she touch, it will be unclean. Everything. She, if she sat on the chair, that chair will be unclean. If she touch the spoon, if she go to the kitchen, she want to cook, whatever she touch, that will be unclean. What kind of woman that? This is my mother and your mother and you're the, the woman of everybody. Why the why the Bible decreasing the woman like that? Okay? And also he mentioned this one. Let's move to the other one because of the time is running out. I'm going to finish uh, at uh, 7 because I still have got 20 minutes left. Right? وَكَلَّمَ الرَّبُّ مُوسَى قَائِلًا كَلِّمْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلٍ Tell the people of Israel is a hablat imra'a wa walad zakat this is the lefticus also chapter 12 verse 1 to 8 here if the woman get birth to the boy when she get unclean she only stay for one week and then she gonna stay 33 days until she get clean but if she get birth to the girl she gonna stay two weeks look for the boy one week for the girl two weeks why is that this is injustice from the bible my friend injustice this is unbelievable not only that okay for the boy uh, for the woman uh, for if she gives birth for the for, for, for a girl she's going to stay also 66 days this is injustice is that is that really not only that this is amazing here so I'm going to read this uh, verse 7, the same, same chapter, but verse 7. فَيُقَدِّمُهُمَا أَمَامُ الرَّبِّ وَيُكَفِّرْ عَنَّهَا فَتَطَّحَّرْ مِنْ يَنْبُوعِ دَمِّهَا You know what is يَنْبُوعِ means of دَمِّهَا, the يَنْبُوعِ of the blood. It's just like uh, when you dig in the ground and there is a pipe of water under the ground and it bears out. The water is coming out like a water fountain. That's the blood of the woman. Come, come on, my brother. Did you gonna are you gonna are you gonna trust that is the word of God? This is Bible is not the word of God for me. For the Christian, they they have to leave this one to come to the Islam. This is the true religion. This is not from God, right? So this is Lefticus. Go read it. And I'm interested in Yanbu Demiha. My brother uh, a warrior there, he knows what I mean by that. Now hitting in the in Bible. <laughs> hitting in the Bible. 
وإذا ضرر إنسان عبده أو أمته This is in Exodus chapter 21 verse uh, 20 to 21 Okay is a darabah insan abdahu. This is a slave. If the if the man da, uh, hit his slave, uh, or or matahu, uh, the woman a slave woman bil asa with the stick. We say it in Islam, if you hit her with the with the brush like uh, like a muswak, you know muswak in Arabic means a toothbrush. In here it says hit her with the stick. Not only that, if he's died, there is nothing will happen to you because she is a woman and she is a slave. That's it. Is that justice? Really? Is that justice? That's Exodus. Here in Surah Nisa, he, he brings that. He says, Adribuhunna is right, is correct, is mentioned in the Quran in Surah An Nisa 34. That's correct. But if they obey you, you Adribuhunna, but it means you have to show that you are angry from the action that they did because they want to go out with men and stuff. Because Nishuzuhunna means the lady that she like to go, you know what I mean? You know what I mean with men and stuff like that. So you, nobody like his wife to go with whoever she wants to. Even if you look at the animal, the, the, the male of the chicken doesn't like another male to come inside his, with his chicken there. So this is, this is the nature of man, right? So to drop her, you hit her to, sh to show her that you are angry from her action. Now I'm going to move on to another one is deuteronomy, chapter 25, um, verse Five. Okay. Here you're talking about the the, the, the equality in mirath. Um, here you say is a second ikhwa ma'an wa mata wahid minhum. Two brothers living together. One of them died. The other one straight away just grab the woman and take her to your wife. That's it. You don't give her any choice. You don't give her any kind of like um, ask her if she like him or she doesn't like him. No, in Islam, no. This is prohibited in Islam. You have to give her permission. You have to ask her. And even if she is your brother uh, wife, you don't need to uh, go to marry her like that. It, it, I don't know. I don't know how that. The marry only allowed if somebody died and the woman has got uh, children, you can marry her if she's uh, closer to you or somewhere re relevant there. You can marry her so that you can look after her kids. This one here, straight away, he just take her to, for him to, to his wife. Now, I'm gonna move into the other one. I, I know I want my brother to also to respond to that uh, 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 verse as well. So here, my brother also, I'm going to the Ephesians, Ephesians chapter five, verse 22 to 24. O oh, women, listen and obey your husband as you obey God, okay? That's okay, that's, that's, that's the order. I do agree with that. But look at the one that coming after. And of course, the man who was al Mara. This is where we do not agree with that, my brother. This is unjust. Tell her, obey your husband, which is fine. But don't explain because the man is the head of the woman. Kama anna al as Jesus is the head of the church, and that's okay. وَالنِّسَاءَ لِرِجَالُهُنَّ فِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ So, وَلَكِنْ كَمَا تَخْضَأَ الْكَنِيسَ لِلْمَسِيحِ كَذَلِكَ النِّسَاءَ Thus, also the women, they should be listening to their husband in everything. Really? In everything? This is the verse number 24. Okay? My friend, I want you to respond to this. This is not the word of God. This is not equality in the Bible between men and women, my friend. A man dominant to the woman in everything. Okay? I'm going to move to another one. Um, a woman in, in, in Christianity also, she has to keep silent and shut up her mouth. She cannot speak at all. She's going to sit like a chair. This is in Corinthians, the fairest, chapter 14, verse uh, 34 to 35. A woman cannot talk at all. Go and check that one out. Because they are not allowed to speak in the church. I am okay. That's okay because maybe in the chair, the priest will talking and everything. That's okay. But in the chair, they are not going to talk at all. That's okay. Look at the next one. The next one says, well, I can in your written and yet shay'an. If they want to learn something from the priest, they are not allowed. They have to ask their husband at home. Why? Why? I have to ask the priest because the priest, the one that who is the knowledgeable more than my husband. I have to ask the priest, my brother, 
this is not the word of God. This is just the fabrication, my friend. Okay, let's go to the first Timothy. Timothy, uh, Timothy, chapter 2, verse 11 to 14. This we say, uh, this is also prohibited the woman to be leading or teaching. Well, I can listen to Adam. I'm not going to give the permission to the woman and to go and teach so that they, she cannot be above the man. Just also to be in the silent. That's injustice, my friend. And justice, this one. Brother Ahmed, you have uh, yeah. 30 seconds. I've got I've got ten minutes left because uh, it's, uh, he finished at uh, six thirty and then I've, now it's forty nine. You have got just okay. you have just got thirty seconds left. Hey, I've got ten minutes left, my no, brother, yeah. because you, I know you, the are, time you already time. you already spoke for nineteen minutes, and uh, okay. this is also okay. good. I'm wrapping up, wrapping up. Okay, I'm wrapping up now. Okay, so here. Um, the woman, the Kanani, the Kanani woman, he mentioned already that the Jesus piece of him. I'm gonna come to that one later in my time. He told her she is a dog, a dog. This is clearly in Matthew chapter 15, verse 21 to 28. Okay, this one here, Aleti Tezni, the one that commit adultery, also she has to be. Uh, this is in uh, FCS. FCS uh, chapter 728. Even the woman can be sold, normal, sold in the market, right? And woman can be sold as a slave, and if she re released, she cannot come back. Exodus chapter 21, 7. Now I'm going to give my friend to speak. It's 650. 50 minutes now. Go ahead, mate. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Ahmed. Uh, 